It comes from above. Yes, you shall be a source and avenue. A fountain that will not run dry. That no man can trace the source. I said nobody can trace the source. You don't I said no man can trace the source. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet sound of your Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The month of June is Workers' Month. Amen. Where the workers take over the services. We run the services. We give our pastors a little break. Not too much. A little break. Amen. Amen. So we, I have a, a word for us tonight. I believe that the Lord has a word for us tonight. So if everyone can turn their Bibles to Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, and we will start. Matthew chapter 16, Verse 19. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we cover this word tonight in the blood of Jesus. Father God, we ask, O oh Lord, wherever they have gathered together against this word, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, let your word be established in our hearts and in our minds, Father God. We thank you. We commit this service. I yield myself unto you, Father. Use me to your glory. Let man not see me, but see you in me, Father God. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would take over, Father. Take over, Lord. Take over and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So if I had to title... This message today, it would be the keys to the kingdom. There are keys to the kingdom. If we can turn, if anyone is there, to Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And it says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now who's talking here? Is it man? No, man doesn't have the keys. No. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of where? Of earth? of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven let's look at this for a moment let's go step by step so we can understand the word tonight a kingdom what is a kingdom a kingdom is a country or region that is ruled by a king or a queen it is a specific area, amen? A kingdom has a king or it may have a queen. When you look at the different kingdoms in the land, you see that there is either a king or a queen. So the Lord has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now let's look at, at, at let's break it down a little bit. Whatever, what does the word whatever mean? anything without specification whatever anything everything it, it, it doesn't limit it has no limit right so it says whatever 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 you choose it's a choice whatever you choose now let's look at to bind do we know what it means to bind to bind means to tie or fasten to forbid by an indisputable authority. That's what it means to bind. So when you bind something, you're essentially tying it together so it, it can't move. It has no more movement. Amen? It is restricted. Now, to loose, when you lose something, you ever do your hair and you, you're loosing out the plaits? 
To loose means to untie. So it's kind of like the opposite of binding, right? When you bind, you tie, you, you fasten, you hold together. But when you loose now, you are untying it. You are giving it permission. You are permitting it by an indisputable authority. You're telling it to open, to open. Now, it says, I will give you the keys. So there are keys. What does a key do? What is a, what is a key? We all have keys, amen? If you started your car, a lot of us have the, the star, the automatic star, where you, you know, you just press the key. A key is an instrument that is used to open a lock or start or to gain access, and it can also close. When I leave my house, I stick my key in the door and I lock the door. So it says, I have nobody comes in and nobody goes out if you if the door is locked so i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you decide whatever you choose to bind on earth this is earth we live on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you decide to loose to give access to on earth, I'm going to do the same thing. That is what the Lord is telling us. What are the characteristics of keys? Keys will give you access to something. Yeah. You stick your key in the door. You open your door. You now have access to enter into your home or enter into your car. Keys also give authority. The people that are in jail, guess who has the keys? The warden the CO, the correction officers, the keys are given to those that have authority. So if you have a key, you have authority. I have the authority to go in my house and open the door. Keys can open and keys can close. And keys are specific. Do we understand that? I can't take my key and go try to enter into Mama Jackie's house. What's going to happen? The key won't fit. 911. 911. The keys won't the keys are specific. The door will not open. It's not gonna happen. It's open. It, right. It might enter. Now some of the keys, that's yeah. right. Some of the keys yeah, it may okay. enter, but, it but to work. turn it's not turning cuz I don't have the right key. Can keys just operate on them on their own by no, themselves? No, no. No. A key needs what? A body, an operator to stick that key into the door and open it. The key needs movement from someone. You also need force, don't you? Yeah. You need some type of force to push your, to be able to push it into the door and open it. So to, in order to open a door, you need a measure of work, that there is a measure of work that has to be done. The Bible says here that I have given you the keys and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. But there is a work that has to be done, right? Or else you're just going to have a key and you're just going to be standing. It's going to be a useless key because you don't know how to use it. Maybe you have never been taught how to use the key. Keys can be lost, can't they? Yes. Anyone ever try to, to, to get into your car in the morning and you're running late? Sometimes it's when you're running late. Can't find and you cannot find your keys and you start doing one of these things looking for the keys. So keys can be lost. What about keys can be mishandled or misused? Yeah. I am very guilty when I get my Amazon boxes. If I don't see a knife or uh, scissors... I will take my key and stick it in and open. Is that the, the, the real purpose of a key? No. No. So keys can be mishandled and they can be misused. Jesus has said to us, he has given us the keys to the kingdom. What, what happened if you have lost your key? What happened if you have not learned how to operate that spiritual key that the Lord has given to us? Then what? Whatever comes in, comes in. Whatever goes out, goes out. Because you don't have the authority. You don't know how to use the keys that God has given us. 
Now we're talking about in, in, on earth and in heaven. There is a unity, right? Between the earth and the heaven when God speaks in this word. But what happens if you don't know how to use the key that God has given to you? It will be a useless key with doors that need to be shut or doors that need to be opened. And can you imagine year after year after year, the Lord has already put a door before you. But because you can't see that you have a key, because you don't know how to use the key, because you have not spoken or commanded that door, that key to be open, now you are just year after year after year. The door is there. God has set the open door before you, but you can't find. You have lost. You have put down the keys that God has given to you. So what happens if you lost your spiritual key? I believe you're in trouble. Yes. And what happens if your spiritual key is mishandled or ineffective? You know, when I was looking at this word, um, when I was looking and I was meditating on the word and I said, all right, Lord, you have given us a key. Okay, so we have the key and you said the door will be open or closed. But now what work needs to go into opening the key? I can't just have a, uh, the door. I can't just have a key here and stand by the door. It's not going to open. There has to be some type of work behind it. And as, as I was reading, the Holy Spirit mentioned or, or spoke to me and said, you know what can, can render your key useless? You know what will close your door? You know what will stop things from that are supposed to be open and, and stop them from being open? Your mouth. Your mouth will cause your spiritual key to be mishandled or ineffective. The words that you use in situations will either open the door or close the door. Let's look. James chapter 3. James, three. James chapter 3. If anyone finds it, they can read James chapter 3 from verses 5 to 12. James 3, 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Verse 7. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpent, and of things in the sea is tamed, and had been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Verse 11. That a fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. Amen. Amen. Verse 8 says, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So when we, went, when we looked at our, our, our main verse today, tonight, there are keys that open doors and your mouth will open the door or shut the door to your blessings, to your miracle, to everything surrounding your life. 
There is a key that God has given to us. And by our mouth, by our heart, we put that key in order to open the door. However, if you have already spoken to, to, to that door or spoken evil to that key, it's not going to function the way that it's supposed to. It's not going to open what it should open. It's going to close what should be open and open what should be closed. If we look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Look at that. I have set before you life and death. So the doors of life and death are opened or closed by the words that we speak. Therefore, it's telling you to choose life that what? Both you and your descendants may live. Brethren, you can open your mouth and ruin not just your life, but your descendants to come. You can open your mouth and you can speak blessing, not only to you, but for your descendants to come. The Bible is saying, I, I, you choose. I give you life or I give you death. Please choose one. How many times have we closed what need to be open and open what need to be closed? Your tongue will determine if life or death will be selected. A lot of times we have opened our mouths and given our keys to the enemy. How? In negativity. Negativity. You ever met someone who is negative? Yes. Everything that you try to tell them is just negative. I remember I was working with someone on something and the person said, oh my God, this is really hard. They didn't start yet. They didn't start. Oh my gosh, this is going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard. You know, it's, gonna, it's just going to be hard. You already opened the door of difficulty to your situation. You opened it. Now who's going to come in and make it easy? <laughs> Even if it was a little challenging, you have opened the door to difficulty, to the thing that you're about to do. So, of course, why wouldn't it be difficult? You already just spoke defeat into your life. So yes, I left two, three, four, five hours later. It is still the same way you left. I left it. Why? Because you have used the key of your mouth and you have opened that door. Brethren, we have to be careful what doors we open and what doors that need to be shut. We have to be very, very careful. Do you know you can bind your marriage by your mouth? You know, it's possible. You can open your mouth and you can talk all kinds of stuff about your marriage. And you will bind the fruitfulness. You will bind the joy. You will bind, you will bind everything about your marriage. Some people even do it before they're married. Before you even married, you, you, some people have done that. And you have bound your marriage. And God is looking at you like, well, you spoke struggle into your marriage so you have opened the door already we have bound our children sometimes I was uh, at practice one day and I was speaking with one of the coaches and that man said all kinds of stuff about his child his children specifically the third child he's the devil you know and he just went on and on and I was looking at him and I was like rebuking and I'm like oh my goodness you have opened the door. You have used the key that God has given. And you have opened your, the door for what? Your child to behave like the devil. So now when the child begins to behave like the devil, what do you expect? Unless you go back and close that door prayerfully and spiritually, it's still going to be open. I will never. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever said it? Be careful. I will never. 
you are now opening the door to I will never little things that we say that can go a long way spiritually if we don't be, if we're not mindful we can talk about our kids this kid is you know some people call their kids knuckleheads and this child is this this child is that this child is this you won't uh, never amount to anything you will grow to be this and grow to be that you have spoken the word now when you begin to eat the fruit of it who are you to blame I remember, and this is personal, I remember when I was younger, I said, I'm not having kids. I used to say it. And my mom would be like, no, don't say that, don't say that. And I would say, I'm not having kids. I don't want kids. I'm not having kids. Now, when it's time to actually uh, get pregnant, there's challenges, there's difficulties. Who opened the door? I used that key that God had given me, and I opened the door of difficulty, and I closed the door to being fruitful in childbearing. Do you understand that? Yeah. A lot of times we speak and we speak foolishness sometimes. Sometimes we speak out of ignorance and we close things. And then when you go through the struggle, who is to blame? Yourself. Yourself. This is going to be hard. This is very difficult. This is challenging. I can't. I can't. I can't. You are opening the door of I can't. So when you can't, you have no one else to blame. I can. I can. Instead of speaking positively and opening the door of miracle and signs and wonders, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do, you know, you can, there's words you can use that will, God is looking at say, oh, she just took that key and opened the door of signs and wonders. Calling your children, telling your children, my children will inherit the earth. My children will not bring me shame. You are closing the door of shame. You are closing the door. My children will, will, will live in abundance. They will not struggle like I have struggled. We need to speak life Hallelujah. we need to speak life some of us have grown under parents or grandparents and and the negativity yes. just goes from generation to generation to generation brethren the door of negativity is open is loose and the door the door that should be open is closed why is it i will never i was speaking to a sister recently and she began to, now when you start using certain words, I, I have to go, I'm sorry, because I don't want no part in it. I will never, I will never do this and do that, do this. I say, you speak in foolishness now, and you need to stop. And this is where I have to go. I have seen people on their dead be deathbed who have said, I will never, I will never. And at the deathbed, they are begging, brethren, we have to be careful. Yeah what type of doors we open and we allow we shouldn't be allowing people to speak negatively against our children or our husbands and and our businesses and everything we have to be careful if we look at numbers chapter 13 Numbers chapter 13, and I will start from verse 26. It says, Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Verse 27. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. 28. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. 
the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Verse 32, And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw giants. The descendants of Anna came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Brethren, what did they do? What door did they just open? The door. By their mouth. By their mouth, they have closed the door to enter into the promised land. Now, look at, look, listen to this. God had promised them the land, didn't he? God promised them the land. If God has promised you something, is it really you that's going to walk yourself into it? It is the Lord himself. But because of fear, I don't know what, because of fear, it, everything I read here is fear. Because of fear, they have now closed the door to the door of their promise. A promise, if God promised you something, brethren, it is going to come to pass no matter when, no matter where, no matter how long it takes. But these people, they just opened their mouths and pretty much cursed themselves. If you go to Numbers chapter 14, verses 22 and 23, actually, we can read 24 as well. 22. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. Verse 23, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. Now what did they do? They stopped their own selves from entering into the promise. Was God pleased by the words that they used? No. 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 And in fact, he's saying, because you have opened your mouth with the keys that I have given you and opened those doors of fear and closed those doors of entering into your promise, truly, as you spoke, as you said it yourself, you will not enter. It's too hard. Too hard for you to enter verse 24 but my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it brethren the Bible says he has given us the keys to the kingdom not just you your words don't just affect you how you live your life is not just you. It affects your descendants to come. So these spies who went before Caleb and opened their mouth, they, they, they cheated their very own descendants yes. from entering into land of milk and honey. They have closed the door to their promised land. God forbid by saying I can't or you can't they're too big they're too this they're too that you they, they have closed the door to their miracle the keys of the tongue has rendered many keys of the authority useless we have to be careful our children are are 
are perfect? Let's be honest. Are our children perfect? No. If you have a perfect child, God bless you. God bless you. Mine are not perfect. Parents, we need to be careful what we say out of anger. We have to be careful what we say out of emotion. We have to be careful what we say when we are going through pain. If you talk about the headache is killing me and it's killing me and you end up, who opened the door? The power of life and death is in the tongue. If you open the door, this is killing me. This, this runs in my parents' family. You know, my mother died of this. My father died of this. You, you open doors that you can't close. No kingdom. Power of life and death. We have to be careful what we say when we're in pain. We have to be able to control our emotions. We have to be careful what we say in sickness. And in health, we have to be careful what we say in frustration. Do we get frustrated sometimes? Yeah. We have to be careful what we say in failures. Just because you fail once doesn't mean you're going to continue to fail. Speak life. Open the door of life to whatever you may have failed in before. Use your children. You know what? I failed in this in my time. My children, by the grace, by the mercy, by the power of God, will not fail in the areas that I have failed. My children will not experience the difficulties that I have experienced in my life because of the words or because of my actions or because of hereditary uh, generation to generation. None of that is the portion of my children. Brother, the Bible says to speak life. Choose what, which one. But don't speak death and then come ask for prayer. Right. Don't, don't, don't speak death. Don't speak I will never or I, I will, you know, I can't. Or I Don't speak death. And then come and ask God and expect God to do a miracle. God is looking at you say, I gave you the authority. You have the keys in your hands. What did you do with the authority and the power that I have given to you? What door did you see in your life that needs to be closed? And you know what? Many times people have spoken over our lives. Some of us have parents that just negative you will never amount to nothing you will never and those words give life they give i remember something someone told me when i was younger and i can tell you every now and then i think about that thing and i say i, I rebuke it i rebuke it i close whatever door that has been open i'm not receiving it my children are not receiving it my generation to come is not receiving brethren we have to speak we have to use the authority, the power, the key. You have a key in your hand. Some things need to be bound. High blood pressure and all this cancer and this and this that is just uh, through the land. We have, to, unless you speak and use your authority, the door will continue to be open. Do we understand that? Yeah. We need to speak and we need to speak life. Just because you are going through does not mean that God is not able to see you through. Just because something happened doesn't mean that God has forsaken you. What does his word say? He will never leave you nor forsake you. You are more than a conqueror, but we tend to live as peasants. Some of us can't get over the Gideon mentality. Some of us, that door of, of, you know, we have no confidence in anything has been opened based on things people have said to us. And we just leave it open instead of shutting it and say, you know what? I bind you in the name of Jesus. Brethren, some things have to be bound in our lives and you have to do it. Amen. You yourself have to put the work in. As I said earlier, you can stand by a door with a key, but 
and you can stand there all day if you want to. Is the door going to open? No. No. Unless you take the key and push it into that door and either lock it or open. That's, that's how things are done. I want us to pray. I want us to pray tonight. Our first prayer point. We're going to ask the Lord to deliver us. I'm going to be very honest. Sometimes in fear, sometimes in frustration, we can open our mouths and we can say all kinds of things and we can close and open doors that God did not have intention of. But because of you, you opened your mouth. We're going to ask the Lord for mercy, for, to deliver us anything we have spoken ourselves against our children, against our spouse, against our business, against our God-given duty. Let us ask, let us cry to the Lord, asking for mercy and to deliver us. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you tonight, Lord. We ask, Father God, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Father God. Any, anything that we have spoken, Lord, that has given the devil access, Lord, to our lives and to our, our kids. Father God, to the land of our life, Lord, we ask for mercy, Heavenly Father. Lord, for mercy tonight. Father God, we ask deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Lord, anything that we have opened our mouth, Lord, against, Lord, that is hindering us, Lord, that is working against us. Lord, Father God, we close those doors in the name of Jesus. Any door, Father God, that we have opened, that is hindering the enemy, Lord, Lord, God Almighty, close it in the name of Jesus. That was closed in the name of Jesus. spoken into your life I don't care who it is any open door that has given the enemy access into your life maybe it's something that has been spoken into the life of your children we bind it in the name of Jesus we bind it in the name of Jesus. Let us pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Any words that has been spoken any words that has been spoken against us, Lord God, 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 tonight we pray that those words be spoken in the name of Jesus. Those evil declarations, Lord God, of mercy, be broken in the name of Jesus. To our children in the name of Jesus. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Father God, we bind it. Lord God the mighty, we bind them in the name of Jesus. We bind it, Lord, in the life of our children. We bind it in our lives, Lord. We bind it over the ministry. We bind it over our health. We bind it over our finances. Lord, we bind those doors in the name of Jesus. We bind it. We bind it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything, Lord, that is working against us, Lord, that is working against our children, that is working against our ministry. Father God, we pray that you will be in the name of Jesus. Lord, that door be closed in the name of Jesus. That door be closed in the name of Jesus. We command those doors closed in the name of Jesus. We command those doors closed in the name of Jesus. We command those doors closed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray. We're going to open doors tonight. You're going to open the door. You're going to speak over those doors. You're going to open the door of success. You're going to open the door of your God-given mandate. It shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. You're going to speak over your children tonight. You're going to tell them that they will be the head and not the tail. These children will not bring us shame. These children will not bring Amen. us misery. These children, we, the children that we have birthed, 
will bury us and we will not bury the children. We're going to pray tonight. Brethren, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak unto our children. Father God, our children, Lord, will not bring us children in the name We speak, O God. Lord, we open the doors of life to them in the name of Jesus. Let them be life. Open the doors of favor unto them in the name of Jesus. Let them be life. Favor shall find our children all the days of their life. Declare life. Our children shall be the head. We declare life. In the name of Jesus, we will not bury our children. We speak life. Let there be life. Abundant life. We lose mercy. We lose grace. In the name of Jesus, our children, they shall fulfill their God-given destiny. Children will be great and mighty Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Our children will do what their parents could not do Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We speak, Lord. We speak, Lord. Over this place. Over the tabernacle. 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 Over the they shall be above and not be near. They shall inherit the earth in the name of Jesus. We shall use them in the name of Jesus. We lose our children tonight. Lord, signs and wonders. We open the door of signs and wonders. Of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. They shall be light to their generation in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we're going to pray whatever has been planted whatever words mm. have been planted into your life into mm. your mind listen I told you a, a relative had spoken something into my life many many years ago and just today I was thinking about this thing and I said, my God, something spoken can have such a, can, can be planted as a seed in someone's heart. Could you imagine? Something that has been spoken can be planted into someone's mind and someone's heart. We're going to pray tonight that whatever the enemy that's what we're going to call it. Whatever the enemy has planted in your life or into your future, into your marriage, into your children, let it keep them from the seed of the weak that we know grow. Let us pray. The seed of the enemy we know grow. Cover these prayers 
in the blood of the blood of Jesus. We pray that as we have prayed, we shall begin to see doors open in our lives. As we have prayed, we will begin to see the doors of the enemy closed in our lives in the name of Jesus. We cover our prayers in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us share the grace. Oh, oh. May the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love of God, and, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Amen. God bless you. Amen.